Tonight's game on ESPNU is presented in high definition. Bowling Green, Ohio is excited about its football team, and tonight, the Falcons host a Big Ten opponent for the first time ever. Tim Brewster's Gophers are feeling good after winning their opener against Northern Illinois. But they're the underdogs to Greg Brandon's Falcons, who upset number 25 Pittsburgh last week. ESPNU College Football Primetime presented by City. And getting into Doit Perry Stadium, no easy task tonight. A sellout crowd expected for the home opener. It's the Golden Gophers and the Falcons. Both teams want to know. Hi again, everybody. Welcome to Primetime. Alongside my partner, Dave Diaz and Fonte, I'm Clay Mantic. And this town of Bowling Green, Ohio, is jumping. They are excited about their team, especially after the upset of number 25 Pitt last week. Greg Brandon's staff is having a lot of fun. And fun might be the best way to describe how the Falcons play offense. Yeah, and we talked to the coaching staff. They're one of the loosest staffs we've seen so far. They really enjoy coaching up their guys. They played four different guys at the quarterback position. Nine different guys caught passes. They lined up a left tackle at wide receiver, and a wide receiver played center for a couple snaps. It drives off defensive coordinators crazy, and it's part of the fun they have and the challenges they present to defensive coordinators week in and week out. They've got a ton of weapons. Nine different receivers caught passes for Bowling Green last week in that win on the road. We'll see what happens here tonight. Meanwhile, the Golden Gophers of Minnesota have already matched their win total from 2007. Tim Brewster's Gophers lost 11 games last year, including one to this Bowling Green squad. That's why the win last week was so good, because it was a close victory. A lot of those games they lost last year were by seven points or less. Yeah, you're right. And he knew what he was getting into last year. He made his mark as an incredible recruiter, and that's how they've started to build their change within the program. They put an emphasis on recruiting the state of Minnesota, making sure no good player goes unrecruited in their own backyard. They also gave a national scoop, uh, scope to their recruiting process like it's never been done before there at Minnesota. Well, last year's game went to overtime in Minneapolis. Greg Brandon's Falcons won that one. We'll see what happens here tonight. Minnesota, Bowling Green coming up next. ESPNU College Football Primetime is presented by City. Whatever your story is, your City card can help you write it because City never sleeps. On the campus of Bowling Green University in Bowling Green, Ohio, a sold out Doit Perry Stadium. With Dave Diaz and Fonte on play, Mantic, Minnesota, and Bowling Green set to go. Both teams 1 0 after wins last week in their openers. Hey, Dave, you, you ready to learn something here tonight? Yes, I am. I'll tell you what. <laughs> Here's <laughs> our ESPN News syllabus. In geography, 101 tonight, a course on the community of Bowling Green. If you haven't uh, understood Bowling Green, Ohio, where it is geographically, some interesting things about it. We're going to get you that information tonight. And in history, we're going to teach you about this campus. A lot of interesting nuggets. Minnesota won the toss, so they will start with the football here tonight. And it's an absolutely beautiful day here in Bowling Green. 77 just before kickoff. North-northeast winds in their light. Nine miles per hour as weather is a factor in many places in the country because of Tropical Storm Hannah. It's not the case here tonight. There's Jay Thomas, junior out of Oakdale, Minnesota. He's going to be back deep to return the kick. He's had ACL reconstruction on both of his knees. And Sunisha Vervillo, senior out of Fort Worth, is set to kick off for Bowling Green. And it's going to be loud here tonight, about 30,000 fans here in attendance to watch this one between the Gophers and the Falcons. And we're underway. And this is Troy Stoudemire, the freshman out of Dallas, on the return for Minnesota. Out to the 25. Gets away from one tackler and steps out at the 23-yard line. And Adam Weber is the quarterback for Minnesota. Last year, for the first time in six years, the Gophers did not go to a bowl game. The team went a program worst, 1-11. 
The good news is 15 freshmen got regular playing experience, including Adam Weber. Yeah, they're the one, one of the youngest teams in the country. They only have 11 seniors uh, on their roster uh, starting for them. And Adam Weber, he's a guy that's really, really matured, making better decisions. He's a really good athlete and makes quick decisions. Empty backfield as Minnesota ready for their first play from scrimmage. Weber out of the gun, throws it out, caught by Eric Decker. The junior receiver out of Cold Spring, Minnesota, pick up a five, second down and five coming up. Well, Adam Weber threw 24 touchdowns last year. Nine were to Decker. He just caught that pass. He's Minnesota's go-to guy through the air. It's a young offensive line, but offensive coordinator Mike Dunbar rotates seven or eight guys up there to keep them fresh. Center Jeff Tau Arnett is one of three brothers on this Minnesota team. Second down, and we'll call it six for Minnesota. Four receiver look. And it's a pitch to Decker. And he's got enough for the first down and then some. On his feet to midfield and driven hard out of bounds by John Hainline, the weak side linebacker at the 49 of Bowling Green, a gain of 18. Boy, it fooled everybody, including the camera. Great fake inside and a quick flip to the perimeter to Decker, who takes on the outside and woo, gets hit right in the lips by P.J. Mahone. Decker had a huge game at the Metrodome last week. Ten catches, 89 yards, and a touchdown. Jack Simmons, the tight end, moving in motion. Play action. Weber rolling to his left. Throws it out to the near sideline. It is caught by Decker. And we'll call it a gain of seven as we take a look at the Bowling Green defense. Dyrell Briggs, number 99. A big speed rusher off the edge. He's the leader up front. John Hainline makes all the calls for the defense from his weak side linebacker position and in the secondary. 88 career starts combined for Mahone, Brown, Smith, and Lewis. It is a good secondary. And this defense really held Pittsburgh down, especially LaShawn McCoy last week. They're going to run it here for the first time, at least out of the backfield. And a good hit put on Dewan Bennett by Cody Basler. Basler, the backup middle linebacker, a junior out of Auburn, Michigan. And yeah, Minnesota's off to a good start, establish, establishing some rhythm offensively. You look at this Bowling Green defense, and, and last week against Pittsburgh, they out hit them. They did everything. They ran to the football. They hustled, caused turnovers. Outstanding performance. Bennett in the backfield on third down and two. Weber sends a man in motion, and now a little reverse. This is Ralph Spry, the wide receiver, who got it from Weber. And he's going to have enough for the first down. Kenny Lewis escorted him out, but a gain of three for Spry, and the Gophers are moving the football. It was Dyrell Briggs that had a chance to make that play at the line of scrimmage or for a loss. You'll see right here. Briggs fighting off the, off the reach block. Gives up the outside, and it's Spry breaking a tackle to pick up the first down. First down and 10 from the 37 of Bowling Green. Minnesota on its opening drive. It's Spry again. Caught out in the flat. Nowhere to run. He was stretched out. It's going to be a loss of one as Jared Sanderson, the strong side linebacker, brought him down to the field turf. I'll bring up second and 11. And again, you can tell Minnesota trying to get the ball to the perimeter with the quick, short passes to the wide receivers, trying to set up some blocking to the outside. Antonio Smith is having nothing to do with that. Stayed home, played his responsibility. Four receiver look again for Weber. Hands off to Dewan Bennett, finds a little seam on the right side. He's inside the 35. And down at the 34-yard line, the free safety, Jamal Brown, made the stop after a gain of four. And it'll bring up third down in about seven. And Dewan Bennett averaged over five yards a carry last week against Northern Illinois. He's a guy that's got good balance. They love his leg strength. And he's just got a knack of finding the seam in the defense. Minnesota 5 for 14 on third down conversions last week against Northern Illinois. Third and seven. Weber has time, has a man, it's Bennett caught, five touchdown, DeWan Bennett, a 34-yard touchdown reception, and Minnesota for the second straight week scores on the opening drive. Boy, offensive coordinator Mike Dunbar got the matchup he wanted, that's a running back 
with the defensive end, Dyrell Briggs trying to cover him. See Bennett outside on the wheel route, right up the side. That's a defensive end and a running back. That's a matchup that Minnesota will take every time. Joel Monroe for the extra point. And the senior from Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, makes it 7-0 Golden Gophers. Weber on that drive. Three for There's three for 46 field. yards of this touchdown pass to DeJuan Bennett. Seven. A good start for the Only Golden Gophers zero. on the road. A little over four minutes in, a touchdown catch for DeJuan Bennett, who had a 61-yard touchdown run and the game-winning one-yard touchdown run last week with 22 seconds left, getting Minnesota out to a good start here in Bowling Green. There's Roger Williams back to return this kick from Joel Monroe. As we're getting set to see Bowling Green's unique offense for the first time here tonight. Williams setting up. He'll take it at the 12. Sidesteps the tackle at the 20 and then driven down. Jay Thomas in on the tackle for Minnesota. Now Tyler Sheehan. Starting quarterback for Bowling Green made his first career start in the season opener last year at Minnesota. Threw for 388 yards and two touchdowns in that 32-31 overtime win. And Dave, he has not looked back. No, he hasn't. In that game, he took him down uh, on the last possession of the fourth quarter, set up the field goal to take him into overtime or to tie the score, and then hit the two-point conversion to win the game. He'll throw on first down, and it's caught out at the 24 by Corey Partridge, but immediately hit by Marcus Sherrills, a gain of four. Well, here are the backs and receivers. They've got a lot of weapons, so they're hard to defend. Four guys lined up at quarterback last week, including Freddie Barnes. On the line, two fifth-year seniors on the right side, but center Ben Boychek, he's a redshirt freshman, and he's left-handed, which is pretty rare. Second down at six for Bowling Green. A little reverse. Bowling Green is known for this. Coming to the near side. That was Tyrone Pronti. And a gain of eight. Here's the defense for Minnesota under first-year coordinator Ted Roof, who was the head coach at Duke for four years. Up front, Willie Van de Steeg, one of just 11 seniors on the Minnesota roster. Linebackers, Deion Hightower, the most experienced guy on defense. And Tremaine Brock and Trey Simmons, both junior college transfers, they're in the secondary. They spray it out to the near sideline. Anthony Turner, great catch, and run right after the catch. A pickup of 11 and another Bowling Green first down. Here's Anthony Turner. He's a guy that started at tailback for Bowling Green. He started at quarterback and now wide receiver. You see how physical he is with yards after the catch. Here's Anthony Turner. He's been a starting quarterback, a starting running back for Bowling Green. Play action, Sheehan rolling to the left. Has a receiver caught close to the first down and now picked up. That was Jeremiah Kelly, a gain of 13. And that Minnesota secondary right there, Dave, is going to have its hands full. Simmons and Brock brought in junior college transfers to try and shore it up. You see Sheehan rolling out to his left, throwing across his body to the receiver. And again, tough physical running after the catch. Run by Willie Jeter. And then stopped by Simone Lawrence. Lawrence. The junior from Upper Darby, Pennsylvania, strong side linebacker. Gain of three for Jeter, who's back after missing last week. He was suspended by the team for disciplinary reasons. They're glad to have him back. Second down and seven for Bowling Green is there in Minnesota territory. Ball at the 40-yard line. Sheehan out of the gun. Sheehan so far three for three throwing the football. Throws it again. Out to the far side, caught, and again, a first down. This time, Corey Partridge. Tremaine Brock brought him out of bounds, but another gain of 10. They'll move the chains one more time. And this is what Bowling Green likes to do, spread you out. They get the matchup two on two. Corey Partridge splits the defenders. He's got two blockers out there. That's the matchup they're looking for. He's in space. Another big chunk of yardage. 
Sheehan has time to throw. And he hits Chris Wright. That's going to be close to another first down. The last week was Bowling Green's 10th win over a BCS opponent since 2001. They're going to try and beat Minnesota here tonight. So far, the offense moving. Yeah, straight drop back there. Look at the protection by the offensive line. Allows Sheehan to set his feet and throw a fastball to Chris Wright. And they pick up another first down. First and 10 at the 21 of Minnesota. Oh, ball comes loose. The handoff to Willie Jeter was a bad exchange, but it's recovered by Bowling Green. And that's Sheehan and the running back, that read zone. Ball just kind of comes loose before he can hand it off completely all the way to Willie Jeter. And that's an area where last week, Bowling Green, in their victory over Pitt, they're plus three in the turnover margin. They forced four and threw one interception themselves. Second and ten. Sheehan has time, steps up, throws, and tried to hit Freddie Barnes at the ten-yard line. Good coverage there by Tremaine Brock. A transfer from one of the great junior college programs at Mississippi Gulf Coast. There's Tyler Sheehan locking in on his receiver, and Tremaine Brock, again, one of the seven junior college transfers that Minnesota brought in this last year. He's the hitter in the secondary. He separates the ball from the receiver. Bowling Green will try and convert here on third down. They were 38% last week, 7 of 18. Again, Jeter. A bubble screen on that far side, and he's going to be well short of the first down. He needed to get to the 10. He's dropped at about the 15, a gain of six. Jeter had the lane, but it was Brock coming in, filling the alley, and stopping that for a lot more yards than I think Jeter thought he initially could get. It's going to force Bowling Green to set up for the field goal, settle for three. So Sinesha Vervillo will attempt a field goal of 39 yards. Check that, 34 yards. Out of the hold of Corey Partridge, it's on the way, and it is no good. As Vervillo misses to the left, and Minnesota dodges a bullet. Pretty good opening drive for Bowling Green, but it comes up empty. And Tim Brewster's Gophers have the lead, 7-0. ESPNU College Football Primetime presented by City. Both teams with impressive opening drives. Minnesota converted. Bowling Green did not. A 34-yard field goal attempt missed. Here's that last drive by Minnesota. And for the second straight week, they score on their opening drive. Last week against Northern Illinois, Adam Weber went 8 for 9 passing. The drive went 18 plays, covered 90 yards against the Huskies. Here, another good one against Bowling Green. Yeah, and, and uh, Minnesota couldn't ask for a better opening possession. Running the football, throwing it. And here's a good run. Out to the 40-yard line, the Golden Gophers getting a good run from Shady Solomon, the freshman out of St. Paul, Minnesota, a gain of 19. And Dave, he was the first to commit to Minnesota from Tim Brewster's highly touted class. Yeah, that's right. And he's a, he's a freshman coming in high school. He averaged 8.8 .8 yards per carry in high school. He's a guy that they're very excited about, like you said, of that top recruiting class they brought in. Jack Simmons, the tight end in motion. They're going to run it again. And this time it's Dewan Bennett straight ahead for a gain of four. John Hainline, the weak side linebacker, on the tackle. And Mike Dunbar, a little difference in this offense. A little more run emphasis. They call it that spread coast offense. That spread offense combined with that west coast uh, passing game, running game. They want to be a little bit more physical in how they... Uh, make up their offense. Minnesota keeping it on the ground. It's going to bring up third down and five. Solomon back in there for a gain of two. Solomon went to Creighton Durham Hall High School at St. Paul. One of Brewster's goals, as you mentioned it at the top of the broadcast, Dave, was to keep the best talent in Minnesota at the University of Minnesota. Yeah, keep it in the state and then go nationally and spread the word about what's going on at the University of Minnesota, the improved facilities, and what they have in plan for the program. And a new stadium that will open up next season. Third down and four for Minnesota. 
Weber wants to throw, looks over the middle, Cox and fires the pass incomplete at the 45-yard line of Bowling Green, intended for Eric Decker. There's Arik Dozier, the middle linebacker. He is good in pass protection. Yeah, he's a guy that can, he's their thumper in the middle, but also does a great job in their zone defense. And that time, a little miscommunication between Adam Weber and Eric Decker. You don't see that too often. Those guys combined for a lot of catches, a lot of yards, 10 passes last week for Decker. Decker went in and Weber threw out. There's Corey Partridge back to return. And Justin Kusick with the high snap gets it off. The fifth year senior puts it at the 14 yard line. Partridge steps out of bounds near the 20. A 41 yard punt for Kusick, considered a contender for this year's Ray Guy Award. 7 0 Minnesota. Bowling Green has the football when we come back. Tim Brewster's Gophers up by seven here in the first quarter. And we talked about TCF Bank Stadium, which will open up next September. No other Division I program in the country has built a new on-campus stadium in the last 50 years. So Brewster, Dave, certainly has a recruiting tool. Yeah, he's an excitable guy. He's passionate, and he's bringing that spirit and energy back to the campus. And part of his vision is this new stadium on campus, 50,000 seat capacity expandable to 80,000. Uh, he just thinks that, you know, they're so excited to move in their new facility next year. Uh, and it's going to help him really attract the, the national recru recruits he's going after. Bowling Green had a nice drive, their last possession, but it came up empty. Throwing on first down is Sheehan, and it's complete. Out to the 18-yard line, caught by Corey Partridge. Mike Wallace, the true freshman safety, comes up to make the tackle. And Minnesota going with the three-man front, trying to play some nickel defense behind that. Slow down the passing game. But a Sheehan with great pass protections, it will step up and deliver that ball to Partridge. Freddie Barnes now will take the snap at quarterback. We warned you about this. Bowling Green has several weapons back there, and Barnes will take it himself. A design play. Calls his own number and picks up three for the first down. Freddie Barnes, that quarterback, he's done that a lot. Tyler Sheehan lined up in a stack formation on the right-hand side. And now Barnes just keeps it on a designed run right up the middle. Barnes, a couple of years ago, was the team's starting quarterback. Now he's the Falcons' top receiver. Sheehan connects with Partridge. Stopped at the 37-yard line, a gain of nine. Trey Simmons, the field corner, comes up to make the stop. And, and one of the reasons why they're able to do so many things and, and why they felt they're so effective last week, they have so much of their offense in because they're a very experienced football team. So they're able to install it early, execute it in the game, and four of their eight receivers have some quarterback experience at the collegiate and high school level. Partridge now four catches for 31 yards, second down and one for Bowling Green. Ball at the 39. They flare it out to Anthony Turner. Has room on the near sideline. And it looks like he has another first down for Bowling Green. And there's just so many guys to keep an eye on if you're Minnesota on defense. <laughs> yeah, Anthony Turner is a guy that has, he's thrown for 2,153 yards and 16 touchdowns in his career here at Bowling Green, and he's also run for over 1,000 yards and 18 touchdowns. He's a versatile athlete. First down and 10 at the 42. Play action, Sheehan flares it out, caught at the 41-yard line. And it's going to be no gain for Pronti. And this is last week's win for Bowling Green at number 25, Pittsburgh. In the first quarter, this offense for Bowling Green was miserable. Had six total yards, but they turned it on in the second quarter and got the win. Yeah, they were down 14-0. The defense didn't panic. The offense didn't panic. They had an early turnover. Second down and 11 after a loss of one. Sheehan rolling to the right. In and out of the hands of the intended receiver. 
good hit thrown there by Trey Simmons, the cornerback. Jeremiah Kelly. It's like a good lick from Simmons. And talked about that secondary for Minnesota. They're trying to improve on what they had last year. Yeah, and primarily in the area of speed. They brought in the JC transfers. Two of them are starting their secondary, and it showed immediate improvement. Third down at 11. Sheehan looking to the sideline. Better hurry up. Stepping up. Throws it downfield and incomplete. Good coverage in the secondary by the Golden Gophers, and Bowling Green is going to be forced to punt. This time, Minnesota in prevent defense. Russian three playing coverage behind it. Tyler Sheehan able to buy time with his legs, but no one uncovers. Marcus Sherrill's back to return this kick for Minnesota. Good punt by Nick Iavanelli for Bowling Green. And hit hard at the 11-yard line. Good coverage down there by Antonio Smith. 49-yard punt and a one-yard return. Talk about hang time. You talk about coverage. There's both right there. Both gunners down there to make a play. ESPNU is now in high definition to get the great action on ESPNU in high def. Contact your local cable operator or satellite provider. ESPNU HD, the big picture in college sports. Adam Weber and company ready to go to work here. On first down, Weber wants to throw. Goes to that far sideline and nearly intercepted. Jarrett Sanderson, the strong side linebacker, almost stepped in front and took that back. Eric Decker, the intended receiver. Yes, yeah, Sanderson, a converted defensive back, safety, moving down that strong side linebacker, almost jumped that pattern for a touchdown. That's an area where Adam Weber had improved last year. Last year, 19 interceptions, got off to a great start last week and threw zero. So they've been pleased with this progression and his decision making so far in camp and in their first game. On second down and 10, Weber will keep it himself. Bounces off some tacklers out over the 15-yard line, a gain of five as he stopped at the 16. And, and that's another dimension uh, uh, that Weber brings. He is nifty with his feet. Quick decision maker. He goes north and south, and he's got the quick feet to go with it. Well, he shattered all kinds of passing records last year for Minnesota, and he was the team's leading rusher in 2007. Yeah. 617 yards and five rushing touchdowns. Third down and five for Minnesota. Weber drops it off short to his tailback. And Bowling Green is going to force Minnesota here into a punting situation. DeWan Bennett catches that pass, picks up three, but the punting unit's going to have to come back up. And that's one of the things about having a veteran team on the field. Defensively, they didn't start to panic after Minnesota took the first possession down the field. They're settling into their game plan. They're rallying to the football. And that's what they did last week against Pittsburgh as well. Played extremely hard. Justin Kusick, second punt of the night. Here comes Corey Partridge. Finds a seam up the middle. And almost broke clear, but he was brought down by Nathan Triplett, a 48-yard punt for Kusick, and a 12-yard return. And Bowling Green will back, go back to work on offense. College football action continues on ESPNU Sunday afternoon as the Morehouse Maroon Tigers face the Fort Valley State Wildcats. College football on ESPNU Sunday at 2 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Tyler Sheehan and the Falcons on first down and 10. High snap, play action thrown out to the far sideline. Freddie Barnes makes the catch, moves into Gopher territory. Ball comes loose, and Minnesota says they have it. And the Gophers do have it as they recover the fumble and will have great field position for this next drive. Ball security, Freddie Barnes. He's a redshirt junior. 
He's got to know to hang on to the football. He's fighting for extra yards, and sometimes that's when it happens. Gets a pad put on the ball. It's on the ground, and Bowling Green has the first turnover of the game. Bowling Green forced four turnovers last week against Pittsburgh and scored 14 points off of those. That's one of the main reasons why they pulled that upset. Here they're the victim of a turnover, and Minnesota goes back to work on offense. And Weber hands off. I mean, no game for DeWan Bennett. Second down to 10 coming up. Now, it's one thing, too, that a lot of young players on the field for Minnesota, uh, whereas Bowling Green has the veteran experience. Can this young team realize, hey, we've got the first big break of the game. Now we got to make them pay for it. That's going to do it for the first quarter. Tim Brewster all fired up for the University of Minnesota. His team has a 7 nothing lead after the first quarter. An impressive opening drive. And now they've got good field position again to start the second. Dewan Bennett has the lone score. And Minnesota has the lead. First time ever that Doit Perry Stadium has hosted a team from the Big Ten, and so far that team from the Big Ten is leading 7-0. Minnesota on top of Bowling Green as we start the second quarter. There's Adam Weber, sophomore out of Shoreview, Minnesota. Put up some big numbers last year, including big numbers in the interception column. So far this season, none, and that has impressed coaches for Minnesota more than anyone. And Weber wants to throw here. On second down, has a man and close to the first down. As Eric Decker. Check that Ben Kuznia makes the catch. And Dave, there's a look at Mike Dunbar, the second year offensive coordinator for Minnesota. And this was more of a power run offense until Tim Brewster got here. Now they've incorporated that spread look. That spread, they're going to throw it around. They still want to be physical in the running game. But Mike Dunbar is one of those experienced coordinators that Tim Brewster brought in. Tim, no head coaching experience, made his mark in college football as a great recruiter and a developer of talent. So he brings in two experienced coordinators. Mike Dunbar, he's the assistant head coach. He has head coaching experience at Northern Iowa and Central Washington. He's been an OC at Northwestern and also at Cal under Tedford. So he's got some great exposure, some different offenses, and it makes for a nice combination with the spread off that read zone option game and then also what they'd like to do in terms of pass protection, throwing the football, and still trying to remain a physical football team. That's part of, that's what Tim Brewster wants. He, he's a physical guy, he's a, he's a tough guy. He was a tight end coach of the Denver Broncos. Uh, that's how I first got to know Tim, and uh, he's a guy that you knew had aspirations to be a head coach, and, and I'm glad to see him get his opportunity to try and do it the right way. Minnesota will try to convert here. They're about a foot short. Two for four so far tonight. Weber under center for the first time tonight. Turns hands off to Dewan Bennett and he picks it up. You know, we were talking with Mike Dunbar this week and he said one of the things that has surprised him is eight of the 11 teams in the Big Ten are now running that spread offense. Go figure, go figure back in the old days. Uh, you know, Woody Hayes, and I think Wisconsin is still holding off. But, I, uh, you know, it's interesting to see how this offense evolved. It forces the defenders to not only defend the field vertically, but horizontally as well. Weber wants to throw on first down. Had a man open at the 13, but the pass a little high intended for Ralph Spry. And some pretty good coverage in the secondary by Antonio Smith, one of the captains on that Bowling Green defense. Weber had his receiver spry, but he took him back over the middle instead of lead him in front. He had the defender back. Defender was in the trail position. Keep him coming across the field instead of taking your receiver vertically. Just put a little bit too much on that ball. Spry, other than Decker, the only experienced Gopher receiver back from a year ago. Second down and 10 for the Golden Gophers. 
Weber wants to keep it himself. Finds some room on the left edge and gets out close to the 30-yard line. And close to another Minnesota first down. Looks like he's going to be about a yard short. Nine on the carry. And this is one area where they think Weber has improved, and they really love his decision-making in that read, in that option-type offense of when he decides to pitch or give the ball or take it himself. A great example of him taking the ball, heading upfield for a good game. Now they're in third and short. 70 yards rushing for Minnesota's offense, 54 passing, so fairly balanced so far. Yeah, and they want, they want their guys up front to be physical, and that gives them a chance. Sixth play of the drive for Minnesota. Third down and one. This time, nowhere to run for DeLon Bennett. A loss of two. Angelo Magnone, the defensive end, the first one to make the hit. Short yardage. It's penetration up front that's going to keep you from converting. And there's Magnone. Boom. No one there. Penetrates the line of scrimmage and makes the play. Offensive right guard, just no one blocks him. Missed assignment. Short yardage. Can't let that happen then. Now fourth down and two coming up. Minnesota has called a timeout. And Dave, we talked about it before. That, that front four for Bowling Green, pretty salty. Last week held a very good running back in LaShawn McCoy to just 71 yards on 23 carries. McCoy thought he was going to do a lot better than that last week. In fact, before the game, he wore a Superman shirt during warm-ups, and that ticked off some of the Bowling Green players. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, note to McCoy, don't wear the Superman shirt and then rush for 57 yards. It doesn't work. But, you know, their defense, too, when you look at Bowling Green, as their offense unrolls here, they're creative in what they did. There's their tight end going across the formation, scoring a touchdown. There's Turner again running upfield, scoring one of his touchdowns. And the defense, aggressive attacking in style. And there's Magnone picking up a fumble. And, you know, they're running, they're going to throw, they're going to force you to defend the field, they're going to throw a few weird things at you, some things that are unconventional. And what it does, it drives defensive coordinators crazy because they got to spend that extra 10, 20 minutes during the week to cover something they may or may not see on the field. And, and that's part of why they do it, and that's why opposing coaches hate it. Talking to Tim Bruce, he goes, oh, yeah, I know. I know they're going to try and do that kind of stuff, but, you know, we'll try to be ready. And, and you can tell he, it, it, it really bothers him to have to do that. He thinks it's gimmicky, but it's worked for Bowling Green. They're very creative in what they do, and you can't argue the numbers of what Bowling Green does on the offensive side of the ball. And a defense so far so good, really. We've got Minnesota looking at a fourth down and two. Well, they sacked the quarterback for Pittsburgh four times, so they brought pressure. They penetrated the line of scrimmage, and, and, and they're a downhill group. I was with them pressed. In fact, I told their coordinator how impressed I was with how they hustled on film. Minnesota's going to go for it. Weber rolling to the right on fourth and two. Tucks and runs, hit at the 30. Needed to get just over the 30-yard line, and Bowling Green says no, he did not. It's going to depend on the spot. Boy, it looked like Weber had the seam. And they're going to want to measure. Now, one thing to note, Eric Decker, the receiver for Minnesota, caught a lot of passes early in this game, but hasn't touched the ball in about 19 plays. And here's Weber. They just give him a run-pass option, and he tries to bowl over a Bowling Green defender, and, and he's a little bit too much there for him. And that's John Hainline making the play and knocking him sideways and not letting him fall forward. We'll see if it's enough for the first down or not. Officiating crew is out of the MAC tonight. Dennis Lipsky is the referee. And Minnesota is short. Bowling Green takes over on downs. We've been talking about that Falcons offense, how impressive they've been early on in this season, but a tip your hat to the Falcons defense right there. Well, it's a defense that kept them in the game last week against Pitt. They shut down the running game. They pressured the quarterback. It all starts with stopping the run. Make any offense one-dimensional, it gives an advantage to the defense. Now they get to tee off on guys. They get to bring blitz packages, and they're very aggressive what they do on the defensive side of the ball. And it really complements their big play offense. Let's see if this lights a fire under the Falcons down seven. Bowling Green has not lost a home opener since 2000. Here's Tyler Sheehan out of the gun. 
Looks to his right, throws to the far sideline. It's a little bit short, but caught by the receiver. And it's Jeremiah Kelly, the senior out of Stockton, California, for a gain of four. And again, they get Tyler Sheehan trying to get him back on rhythm again. A quick throw outside to one of his, his primary targets, and Jeremiah Ke Kelly. Last seven plays for Bowling Green, all passes. We'll see what they do here on second and six. Again, Sheehan wants to throw, and it is caught by Chris Wright. And on his feet out to the 48-yard line, a pickup of a first down, a gain of 17 on that play. Deion Hightower on the tackle. There's Tyler Sheehan again. They roll him to his left. He sees right, hits him on the sideline, and right. Yards after catch, and he's really their speed guy on the offensive side of the ball, and that's effort. That's want to. You can't coach. You either got it in your heart or you don't. Corey Partridge goes in motion. On first down and 10, here's Sheehan. Scans the field, steps up, throws to the far sideline, man wide open. That is Corey Partridge. Nifty move after the catch inside the 35. Down at the 33. A pickup of 14, and Bowling Green moving right along. That's a busting coverage by Minnesota. Tyler Sheehan takes advantage of it. Plenty of time to throw the ball. Finds his receiver all alone outside. Minnesota won the game last week, Dave, but the Achilles heel, no question, was their secondary. Yeah, and it was all last year, and they love how they improved their talent. But new guys take a little while to work together to communicate. This is Anthony Turner taking a snap at quarterback, and he takes it straight ahead. That'll be a gain of seven. Again, they show you their versatility and their willingness to use players in different positions. But it's nothing strange for them. It's nothing gimmicky. All these guys are lined up at quarterback, have played that position at some time. Turner's played running back. He's a wide receiver. He feels comfortable anywhere in this offense. Two receivers to the right, one to the near side. They're going to run it. It's Willie Jeter changing directions. Steps inside the 25. Hit at the 24, a gain of two. Stop short of the first down. Anthony Turner, Freddie Barnes. Tyler Sheehan, they'll all take snaps at quarterback. And so will Corey Partridge. Well, Corey Partridge lined up at center twice last week. Snapped it to the quarterback. And ran a straight go route down the middle of the field. Actually gave Bowling Green the first down on that spot. First down at 10 at the 24. Sheehan. As a man, it is caught. It is Tyrone Prony. A gain of six, Steve Davis, a converted defensive end. Now at weak side, linebacker made the stop. Second down and four coming up for the Falcons. A great example of that spread offense, stress in the zone of the defense. Tyler Sheehan, great protection, has time to throw, and he's going to find the hole in your zone. He fits the ball in there nicely. Brady Minturn, the left tackle, an eligible receiver. Here's a pass that is caught and dropped at the one. Chris Wright had it in his hands and let it hit the turf. Well, Sheehan's going to wish he had that one back. Both players will, in fact. Sheehan throws the ball a little bit low and behind Chris Wright. He gets his hands on it. The great ones make that catch. It's tough. you got to find a way to pull it in. But I know Sheehan's going to say, hey, i got to put that one on the numbers. He was open in the seam. Keep it thin and put it to him. Here's Anthony Turner back at quarterback. Sheehan is lined up as a receiver to the top of your screen. Number 13, Turner takes it himself, finds some running room at the five, hit and knocked down at the four by Tremaine Brock. A gain of 14, first down and goal to go for Bowling Green. That's a quarterback counter, and you see the big tackle pull and lead way for Turner. He takes it right up the middle. You can see how natural he is running with the football out of the backfield. That's because he's played tailback before. He stays behind Fink, the big tackle, leading the way on the counter. Turner had eight carries for 16 yards and a touchdown last week. He's at quarterback again. 
Now throws to the end zone, knocked in the air, and lands incomplete. Turner trying to hook up with a receiver, but knocked down in the uh, end zone by Deion Hightower. That time Turner looks like Tim Tebow there, faking the run, pulling up, and then trying to hit his receiver in the end zone. You see him dip right there, fake the run, and then try to put the, the football on the on Freddie Barnes. Here's the tenth play of the drive. And it's Turner looking for the corner of the end zone. On his feet, dives. And I think they're going to mark him out. I think they're going to mark him out at the one. But great athleticism from Anthony Turner. Watch Turner taking the ball, running right. Watch Barnes out there blocking for him. They've got the blocks. Barnes loses late, but Turner heads up. Boy and tries to go vertical over the top playing Superman towards the pylon. Officials mark him out at the one. That's a good call. Trey Simmons, the knockout tackle. Well, that looks close. It looks like he tried to wheel the ball back over the pylon. Third down and goal. And it's Turner. Touchdown, Bowling Green. Yard touchdown drive for Bowling Green. They were four for four last week in the red zone with four touchdowns. Here they convert on their first chance from inside the 20. Extra point is good for Bavilla. Turner four carries, 25 yards, and a touchdown on that drive. And Bowling Green in front of a sold out crowd has tied it up at seven. 9.06 to go in the half. Bowling Green with an 11 play, 69 yard drive that covers three minutes and 43 seconds. And Dave, we were talking with the coaching staff for Bowling Green. And they said, We've got guys on defense coming over and asking us to play offense because it's such a fun offensive strategy. Yeah, there's Turner right there. One of the complaints about or one of the things people talk about the spread offense is can you be physical down around the goal line? Well, here they got a lead fullback. They got Turner heading up field, and they pound the ball right at Minnesota. That was a physical run. This time the quarterback becomes a tailback with a wing to his left and a fullback in front of him. That's power football in the spread offense. Anthony Turner, his second touchdown of the year. 9.06 to go here before halftime. Troy Stoudemire to the 40, to midfield and down at the 47-yard line of Bowling Green, a 48-yard return for the freshman Troy Stoudemire. Roger Williams on the tackle for Bowling Green. Stoudemire, one of those freshmen coming in. Talk about speed and talent. Here it is, Stoudemire. Takes it north and south, finds a seam. That's a huge team. Great job of blocking by the guys in front of him. There's a seam, he makes one guy miss, takes it outside and turns on the Jets. That's what Minnesota needed after Bowling Green eats up the clock some and heads down for a score. Now Minnesota, its last three drives has come up empty. Three punts after a touchdown drive of 71 yards on their opening possession. They're going to run here on first down. DeWan Bennett picks up five. The goal for Minnesota tonight, Dave, is to get three or four backs in, but Mike Dunbar, the offensive coordinator for the Gophers, said the game will dictate. So far, it's pretty much been DeWan Bennett and a passing game, but well, the last three drives have come up empty. Well, I think DeWan Bennett gives a more physical presence back there in the backfield. You saw him tighten up the formation there, and he does a nice feel and good vision for cutting back. Weber picks up the first down. A gain of seven for Adam Weber. ESPNU College Football Primetime presented by City, Minnesota, and Bowling Green from Doyd Perry Stadium here in Bowling Green, Ohio, alongside former Bronco Dave Diaz and Fonte. I'm Clay Matvick. Both teams coming in undefeated, 1-0 after impressive wins last week. 
This is the first time a Big Ten opponent has played inside the home stadium, Bowling Green Falcons. Tied at seven. 7.55 to go here before halftime. This is Dewan Bennett out of the backfield. Nice catch, nice run down inside the 20-yard line. Dewan Bennett, the catch and run, a pickup of 16. Eric Dozier made the stop on the play. Mike Dunbar having a great feel. How do you deal with pressure from Bowling Green? You throw a screen. Walkers get out front, and it's Dewan Bennett making guys miss, running physical, and heading upfield. Here's Mike Dunbar. And Bennett was named the offensive player of the game by the Gopher coaches last week, not because of the touchdowns, but more for what he did without the ball. And he's going to get a carry here again. Inside the 15, tripped up at about the 12-yard line. Minnesota wanted to be physical coming to this game, and, and now they're starting to do it. And, and Dewan Bennett is the guy that's leading that charge. Straight up the middle. Eight carries now for 23 yards for Dewan Bennett. Second down and three coming up for Minnesota. Ball at the 12-yard line. Gophers took the lead on their opening drive, now trying to regain the lead. The play fake and a pitch. Eric Decker to the end zone. Touchdown, Minnesota. Eric Decker on the pitch from 12 yards out. Penalty flags down. There are penalty markers on the play. You have got to love college football right now. Guys are so creative on the offensive side of the ball. After the touchdown, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 76. That's Dom Alford, the left tackle. Sophomore out of Cleveland, Ohio, back at his home state tonight, called for the foul. There you see. Adam Weber on the option to the wide receiver that was lined up outside already. I have never seen that play run right there. Usually it's a receiver coming in motion with the quarterback, a, uh, a running back out there on the option. That time they line uh, Decker out on the left side. He stays there and waits for the option quarterback to come to him. Great decision to pitch it. Excellent effort of fighting his way in the end zone by Decker. Here's the extra point attempt by Joel Monroe. And Minnesota back on top by seven. Eric Decker, a rushing touchdown, completing a five-play, 48-yard drive. In two minutes and nine seconds in Minnesota, on the road, back in front by a touchdown. ESPNU is now in high definition. To get the great action of ESPNU in high def, contact your local cable operator or satellite provider. ESPNU HD, the big picture in college sports. Now Minnesota is going to have to kick off from the 15 after that unsportsmanlike conduct penalty from Dom Alford, the left tackle for Minnesota. But the Golden Gophers happy that they have regained the lead 14 to 7 here. 6.48 to go here before halftime. Eric Decker, the touchdown. First career rushing touchdown for a guy who's got a lot of passes in his Minnesota career. Yeah, and and the Bowling Green coaches have just raved about him. Roger Williams backpedaling, takes it at the eight. Here he comes to the 20-25 and stood up and taken down at the 28-yard line. A run back of 20 for Roger Williams. Keep an eye on Big 76 on your screen in this replay. This is where the penalty occurred. Alfred, Alfred finishing his block, finishing his block. He's in contact. I don't like that penalty at all. Uh, that, that's a guy working hard, working to get the pancake, to finish a block, to put that guy, in, the defender, into the ground. That's how you're supposed to play the game right there. That should not be called a penalty. Keep in mind, folks, that analysis is coming from a former lineman. <laughs> as that pass is incomplete for Tyler Sheehan. This is a tough game for tough people, and that guy right there was taking a defender to the ride. <laughs> and, you know, give him the ball because he would have scored too. 
Dave, you won a couple of Super Bowls with the Denver Broncos as an offensive lineman. And it, what do you think about the spread offense from a lineman's perspective? Uh, you know, it's interesting. I, the more I watch it, the more I study it on tape, the more I like it. It's hard to stop. It's difficult to defend. And, and it's really created parity in college football across the land. Here's Nate Triplett who knocked down that last pass from Tyler Sheehan. It's going to bring up third down and 10 for Bowling Green. Seven different receivers have caught passes tonight for Bowling Green. Well, that's nothing new. I mean, last week it was nine. Uh, they are not afraid to use anyone, and, and they mix it up as good as anybody in the country. Trying to convert here on third down and ten. Sheehan has some time, throws it deep downfield, has a man caught at the 35-yard line. Jeremiah Kelly, a pickup of 36, and Bowling Green back into Gopher territory. It starts with protection up front. He's able to set his feet. He finds Kelly in the seam, the soft spot between the zones. He's open and he lays the ball right there. Not too much air, just enough. And now they go back to the ground. That's going to be a gain of about two there for Chris Bullock. Sheehan had missed his last three pass attempts before that strike to Jeremiah Kelly. Now 154 yards on the night, 16 of 22. Pretty good numbers. Yeah, zero interceptions, manage the game. They're starting to get a feel for what they want to do on the offensive side of the ball. Three receivers to the right, one to the near side. On second down and eight, flares it up. Screen play, and Partridge pays the price as he is drilled after a pickup of one yard. That was uh, Dion Hightower, the fifth-year senior, who really put a stick to Corey Partridge. Corey Partridge, you run that little screen. He's got two blockers out there. The defenders are coming from the inside out. He couldn't get to the perimeter. He turns back inside, and Hightower makes him pay. Empty backfield for Sheehan. Five-receiver look on third down to nine at the 32. Down he goes at the 41. Simone Lawrence, a junior college transfer who didn't start last week but played a ton of time, gets the sack there, a loss of nine. And you'll see it's corner fire, safety off the edge from the short side of the field. Tyler Sheehan has no idea it's coming. Jailbreak up front, Minnesota. That's pressuring the quarterback on third down. So the Minnesota defense forces Bowling Green to punt. Here's Ayavanelli. Fair catch called for, and now it's going to roll inside the five. A 38-yard punt for Nick Ayavanelli. And Minnesota looking at a long field when we come back, leading by seven. On a beautiful night in Bowling Green, Ohio, college football primetime presented by City 14-7 Minnesota late in the first half. Monday at 7 Eastern, Lowell Galindo, Mike Godfrey to Tom Luganville deliver inside the polls presented by 76 all season long. We're going to break down the hot topics of the day and bring you the topics of college football. Then Tuesday at 1 Eastern, Lowell Galindo hosts Coaches Spotlight presented by Liberty Mutual. See and hear how a team is doing from the head coach's perspective. And from coaches all around the country. Inside the Bulls presented by 76 on Monday at 7. And Coaches Spotlight presented by Liberty Mutual on Tuesdays at 1 Eastern. Adam Weber and the Gophers take over. First down at 10 at their own 2. And they're going to try and run out of the shadow of their own goal line. John Hainline steps up to make the stop after a 3-yard gain by Dewan Bennett. And Minnesota, see what they could do, backed up out of their own end zone. So far, a balanced attack of the 28 plays they've run, 18 runs, 10 passes. Got themselves a little breathing room right there. Dewan Bennett 
has enough for the first down, and now Minnesota can breathe a little easier. Pickup of 10 for Bennett, who's shown that he's a pretty good receiver here as well tonight. And that's a little bit of that spread coast offense. It's Dewan Bennett coming out of the backfield into the flat. Good natural ability catching the football with his hands. Bennett, the left of Adam Weber on first down and 10. Simmons in motion. Weber steps up in the pocket and takes a hit at the 10 yard line. There is Dyrell Briggs with the sack, a loss of five. The third year starter at defensive end comes up with a big play. Dyrell Briggs, two sacks last week. He keeps working. Pushes, use an inside move to come back underneath the big offensive tackle, doesn't quit, and closes on the quarterback. And you can see him kind of controlling his celebration. A penalty last week that I think was totally uncalled for, excessive celebration. That time he held it in. He did everything he could. Kept it in check. Second down at 15 for Minnesota. Two and a half to go in the half. Bennett. Got close to the original line of scrimmage, but P.J. Mahone stopped his progress. A gain of five. It's going to bring up third down and long for the Golden Gophers. And now Bowling Green has called a timeout. And Briggs almost made that play in the backfield. He's really the emotional leader of that defense. Uh, he's a long-armed guy. He plays a lot stronger than you think with a guy at those kind of levers. He's fast. And one thing Bowling Green prides itself in is their ability and the conditioning that they have and to play hard through the course of four quarters because they're used to such a quick tempo practicing against their offense and they think that's what won the football for them against Pitt last week and now they get a chance right now to keep the pressure on Minnesota as we see Dewan Bennett you see kind of gets tweaked a little bit you saw that boy his ankle and knee kind of caves in Good thing he's a young man. You're my age and that happens. It's over. <laughs> when you're your age, a lot of things go south. <laughs> Coming up at halftime with Lowe Galindo and Tom Luganville, Ohio State and Michigan survive scares. The Irish in their home opener, they'll talk about that and some fantastic finishes in week two of the college football season. Third down and 11. Weber again feeling the heat. And again goes down. Tyrell Briggs again, a loss of four. A lot of times defense is about heart and hustle. Look at Bowling Green, pressure upfield, never quitting. People rallying the football. It's like missiles are flying by Adam Weber. And Briggs finds a way to pull him down to the turf. Second sack of the night. Two last week, two this week. Briggs weighed only 197 pounds when he came to Bowling Green five years ago. Now he is a solid 230 pounds. And I'll tell you, Adam Weber felt all 230 pounds here. Yeah, and he's kind of one of those hybrid guys. They play him up in a two-point stance. They'll even play him off the ball. They play him down in a stance. And those kind of guys, I guarantee you, uh, the pro scouts in the National Football League is looking at this young man because he's got the knack get it to the quarterback and with two minutes and five seconds to go before the half Bowling Green is going to have good field position here Justin Kusick on for the third time tonight he's going to punt from his own end zone Corey Partridge standing at the 47 to return good kick Partridge calling for the fair catch and Bowling Green will have it at their own 49 a 38 yard punt for Kusick now, for those of you just tuning in, here's our game track. Adam Weber and the Golden Gophers engineered a great opening drive that resulted in a touchdown catch for Dewan Bennett. There's Anthony Turner, not the regular quarterback, but a lot of guys take snaps for Bowling Green. He ran it in. And then Eric Decker, a touchdown, his first career touchdown run. Yeah, wide receiver getting the ball on the option. So that's where we're at, 14-7, under two minutes to go before the half. 
Here's Sheehan throwing on the run, coming back for the catch. Marcus Parks. He has had Gain of 13 for Parks, the fifth year senior. And now I think we're getting close to eight or nine guys catching passes now for Bowling Green tonight. They are distributing the football all over the field to different guys in different positions. Clock moving, a minute and 48 to go. Sheehan wants to throw again. Quickly out to the sideline for Chris White. That's going to be a gain of seven on the play. He steps out of bounds to stop the clock with a minute 44. And you can see the smile on Greg Brandon's face because they've never had this many weapons, I think, to run this offense. They've been extremely effective with the guys they've had before. But now they've got weapons all over the field, and, and they're just tickled pink about that. On second down. Sheehan. Pressured. Being chased, throws on the run, and incomplete. It was caught by the, defend, the defender in the secondary there, Kyle Therrett, but he was out of bounds. Therrett started as a freshman last year, thrown in the lineup, but boy, they love his skills. He makes all the calls and checks for the defense in that secondary. For a young guy to have that football acumen is outstanding that they put that kind of responsibility in him. Benefited from what the experience he got last season. Third down and four. Sheehan complete to Partridge. First down, Bowling Green down at the 20 after a gain of 12. Corey Partridge. And the Gophers remember last year that he threw a touchdown pass to Sheehan at the Metrodome. <laughs> So they've seen Partridge before. You're right. Partridge, and, and, and I don't know if there's an inch of this field that they aren't using. See the formation. Yeah, tackles lined up as receivers here. And Sheehan will keep it himself. Not a lot of running room, and he really paid the price there. Willie Vandesteek nails him for a loss of one. And now Bowling Green calls a timeout, but there is one of those goofy formations that Bowling Green will implement. And that time they, they got a little too cute for themselves right there. Uh, they throw out the, the different formation. They've got a guard and a center and two guards in the middle of the field. They've got their tackles flexed outside the hash, and they let their quarterback, Sheehan, keep the football. Not a lot of room to go. And I don't know if he had a check with me option of what he could do with that football. That one didn't work out so well. Well, they got a couple of guys making the calls offensively. And it's interesting to see how they actually go about their play calling. It's Troy Rothenbuehler and Matt Campbell. They take turns. It's, it's kind of a committee call in the plays, and they script plays while their defense is on the field. They write a, they're running a script for their next offensive position, and it, and it allows them to involve so many different players. Eight different players have caught a pass here tonight. It also allows them to pick up the tempo and pace of the game. No huddle. They feel extremely comfortable in that set. Bowling Green, 40 offensive plays here in the first half. 27 have been passing plays. On second down and 11, most likely Sheehan will throw here again. Sets up at the 30. Now steps up and runs. Room to run inside the 20 and inside the 15 out at the 12. A gain of 10 for Tyler Sheehan. And it's going to bring up third down and about two. And, and this is how he's matured. Protects, he feels the pressure. He slides up in the pocket, doesn't force the ball downfield, runs downfield, gain as much yards as he can, and out of bounds. Now a quarterback keeper here with under a minute to go. And it looked like Sheehan picked up one yard on that play, so still a yard short. Looks like they're just trying to get in field goal position here, perhaps. Well, I, they should be taking a shot at the end zone. Now, now a fourth and one. And now Sheehan will throw. And it is caught by Partridge. Now that was actually Chris Wright who made the catch, and he's got enough for the first down. The clock stops with 31 seconds to go as they come back up to the line. That's confidence in your quarterback and receivers. In the face of pressure, throws it out to Wright. 
<laughs> what a huge reception for a first down. They drop it. They they don't get a they don't get a field goal. They come off with no points at all. Well, that's some guts. And now Minnesota wants a timeout with 31 seconds to go here in the opening half. You, you know that's a great example of it is is talking the talk and walking the walk right there. They say they're not afraid to take chances. You know, there's a lot of things happening. There's a blitzer coming in his face. The running back picks it up. He throws the ball to right. He's got a defender all over him. Right makes a big catch on fourth down. Explain the play call, though, on the keeper. Uh, they, I guess they tried to quick snap the ball. Quarterback sneak it to pick up the first down. They thought it would be automatic. It certainly wasn't. Almost cost them a scoring opportunity as the clock continued to run. I think maybe they thought it was a half yard to go. It was actually third and two. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. That wasn't a gimme on a quarterback sneak. Unless they just thought the quick snap would get him off guard. Now after the timeout, first down and goal to go from the eight. Bowling Green down seven, 31 seconds to go. They're out of timeouts. Minnesota has one remaining. Sheehan looking to the end zone, throws and incomplete. Well covered. As Freddie Barnes, number seven, was the intended receiver. Willie Vandesteeg bringing pressure on Sheehan. Look at his numbers so far 21 of 29, 187 yards. He's been accurate with the football. But now Minnesota's starting to pressure him. He's feeling it. He's got to move. And don't be surprised if they move the pocket a little bit here and give him some room to throw on the run. Tenth play of the drive, second down and goal. Sheehan knocked down again. That time it was Marcus Sherrills, the cornerback, who got his hand in the way. Incomplete. Third down and goal coming up for Bowling Green with 23.6 seconds to go. Well, they didn't move the pocket, but what they did is they quickened up the throw. And that time Sheehan threw into coverage. He's lucky that ball didn't get picked off. That was the 30th pass attempt by Sheehan. He threw 40 last week to give you an idea of how much they're going to the air. Look into the end zone again. And had a man, but it's incomplete. Out of the reach of Jeremiah Kelly in the corner of the end zone. And now Bowling Green will attempt the field goal. Now they move the pocket. Get Sheehan on the run to his left. He gets the edge. Running back helps him get there. He's got time and just kind of drifts the ball over the head of his receiver, Jeremiah Kelly. Boy, he was open in the corner. 26-yard field goal attempt for Shanisa Vervilla. He has already missed one here tonight, but this time it is good. He missed a 34-yarder in the first quarter, nails it here from 26, and the Falcons get points on the board with 15 seconds to go before half. Pretty good drive for Bowling Green. Uh, it, it was a great drive. Uh, they made some big plays. They made some smart plays. They used as much of the clock as they could. And, and that time, that's one of the difficult things. And the quarterback, a right-handed quarterback, rolling to his left, trying to get his shoulders around and then drop a touch pass in to the corner of the end zone as opposed to throwing something short and quick towards the front pylon. There's a 12-play, 43-yard drive in a minute and 43 seconds. They knew they had to get something done quickly. They wanted seven. They settled for three. And now they're down four. Bowling Green beat Minnesota last year in overtime at the Metrodome in Minneapolis. A couple of Big Ten teams getting scares today from MAC opponents. Ohio State had their hands full today with the Ohio Bobcats. And Michigan really had to work to beat Miami University. So Bowling Green would like to salvage a win here against the Big Ten today for the MAC. Well, you know how happy Rodriguez is to get his first victory at Michigan after last week. And you look at Ohio University, they had a chance to really win that football game. They don't muff that punt late. They have a chance to go ahead and win the thing. Turnovers cost them that football game. Ohio State was without Chris Beanie Wells today, a big toe injury. They sat him out. Hoping to have him ready for USC and maybe Ohio State was looking past the Bobcats To USC for next week Well in that same vein as well, and that's one thing that Bowling Green 
uh, didn't think they had to worry about was overlooking Minnesota because it's a Big Ten opponent. Squib Kip taken by one of the up men for Minnesota, and they're going to have pretty good field position at the 40-yard line for Minnesota. That was Brian Klitschke on the short return for Minnesota, and Adam Weber will have 12 seconds to work with here before halftime. Yeah, Minnesota's, uh, they're, they're going to take a shot at it. They're not ready to go into halftime just yet. Be interesting to see how they try to advance the ball down the field with one big Hail Mary. If they think they get a couple plays off, they got one timeout left. Yeah, maybe they're nope. just going to be satisfied to take the four point lead into halftime. That's going to do it for the first half here in Bowling Green, the University of Minnesota 14. The Falcons in front of a sold out crowd here at Doyd Perry Stadium. 10. 79 offensive plays combined. Quite a shootout. 413 yards of offense for both these teams. And Minnesota has the lead. Now let's go to Lowell Glendo for Sports Center U. College football primetime presented by City at the half. Minnesota leading by four, 14 to 10. Alongside Dave Diaz and Fonte, I'm Clay Matvick. Welcome back to Bowling Green, Ohio. Dave, a couple of spread option attacks that we see from these two offenses. Maybe not a ton of points tonight, but certainly both offenses have been entertaining to watch. Uh, they sure have been. It's been well played on both sides of the football. One turnover, one penalty in the game. Uh, both teams playing hard and you got to like what you see, I think, if you're both coaches. Who would benefit more from a win here tonight, you think? Boy, I tell you, it's always tough to lose at home if you're Bowling Green. But I think the Minnesota program could really be off to a great start if they were to win their second game of the season after such a difficult time last year. So I, I think for Tim Brewster's group, uh, I, I think it might mean a lot more emotionally. Well, the Gophers certainly got out to a great start tonight on their opening drive tonight. Adam Weber hooking up with Dewan Bennett. Yeah, if Dewan Bennett matched up against a defensive end on a wheel route, leads to the first score of the ball game. And then you have right here, it's Barnes outside, fumbles the ball, the only turnover of the game. But the good news is Bowling Green's defense stepped up and held Minnesota. And then here's Turner lining up at quarterback, taking it into the score for Bowling Green. And then Minnesota, the option to Decker out at the wide receiver position, makes a score 14 to 10. Bowling Green will start with the football here in their second half. Joel Monroe to kick off for the Golden Gophers. And Roger Williams from about a half yard deep. Coming out of his own end zone, taking it to the right. Lost the football, and Minnesota says they have it. And indeed they do at the 24-yard line of Bowling Green. Second turnover tonight for the Falcons. Well, it's Bowling Green last week winning the turnover battle, led to a victory in the game. Here it is on the opening kickoff of the second half. There's Williams again, fighting for extra yards, gets thrown to the ground. Ball comes loose. Minato Minnesota with another opportunity and an extra possession start the game. You see him come right there. There's pads, there's contact, and boy, just gets the ball stripped as Minnesota's raking at that football. You can see it there as he gets slung down to the ground. Williams, one of the top kick returners in the MAC, a mistake here. And Minnesota has great field position. Bowling Green is challenging the previous play. Maybe they saw something that we didn't from up here. Well, they're probably hoping that the knee was on the ground. It sure didn't look like it in the replay. So Greg Brandon making a coach's challenge here. Now, if he's right, he'll get another challenge, but no more than two. Here's a look as Roger Williams came back with the football. There you see it's loose. Well, that football looks like it's loose. I don't know if we, if we can slow it down a little bit. You see right there, the ball is loose before his knee goes to the ground. Uh, that call will not be overturned. Williams last year set school records with 39 returns for 954 yards. 78 came on a touchdown return in the GMAC Bowl last year. 
He's a good kick returner, but here cops it up. Yeah, as he's getting spun down to the ground, the ball comes loose. Here's a look at the uh, replay booth. I think Greg Brandon's going to lose this one. And again, if if this one goes against Brandon, he's done for coaches' challenges. If he were to win it, he'd have another challenge. Right, with a maximum of two per game. But I tell you, I, he's right to challenge that call. It's the first possession of the, the second half. Boy, deep in their own territory. Now here's a chance for a young Minnesota team to go, hey, we retain possession of this football. After review, play stands as called. Minnesota's ball. First and ten. Bowling Green will be charged. A timeout. So they lose a timeout. They don't get the call. And now, can the young football team in Minnesota develop, begin to develop that killer instinct? Hey, now's a chance to change momentum in the game. Make them pay for the mistake. Now, Bowling Green didn't turn the ball over via the fumble at all last week. They did have an interception, but so far tonight, a couple of fumbles. And they've lost them both. Now here's Weber, and they'll run on first down. It's Dewan Bennett, who had that touchdown reception in the first half. And here he picks up six yards on first down, second down and four coming up as Minnesota, leading by four, can make a statement early here in the second half. The good running backs know how to press the hole and make their cutback in the line of scrimmage, not too deep in the back. And on that time, Bennett pushes the front side, uses his vision to find the seam on the back side. On second down and four, it's Bennett again. Picks his way to the 12-yard line. He's got enough for a Minnesota first down. Gain of five for Dewan Bennett. A guy who's been pretty quiet here since the early going for Minnesota is Eric Decker, but Minnesota's doing just fine without their star offensive threat. And a great example of him pressing the front side of the hole and making that cut back into the line of scrimmage for positive yardage. Decker is lined up in the slot on the near side. As Weber takes it to the far sideline, and he's going to be stood up at the eighth and driven back. Gain of four for Adam Weber. And it'll bring up second down at six. T.J. Mahone and Kenny Lewis, the field corner, making the tackle. Timeout call. You get a sense that Minnesota is there's an injured player down on the field for Bowling Green. Oh, and that's one of the big guys inside, Michael Ream. He's a big part of that Bowling Green defense. And uh, Ream, a junior out of Bluffton, Ohio, is up now. He's going to need a little help walking off. Very athletic pass rusher. He's going to come out of the game here for Bowling Green. You get a sense for Minnesota, <laughs> after this turnover, they get the ball. <laughs> They're trying to pound the rock a little bit. They're trying to get physical at the line of scrimmage and let the, let the big boys up front take over this possession and, and, and get physical at the line of scrimmage. And certainly a Big Ten team, the later the game goes on, the advantage is there because generally speaking, Big Ten teams can have a little more depth than Mac opponents. Yeah, and uh, probably a little bit bigger, a little more physical style of football. Uh, but this Bowling Green defense, uh, they've got some players. And they play with a tremendous amount of speed. On right, second down at five. Oh, the snap, fumble, and looks like Minnesota has recovered. Bowling Green says they have it, but no, Minnesota did recover. A bad exchange there between the center, Jeff Tower, Ned, and Adam Weber. Well, that snap looks, never got back. The snap looks like it just uh, got caught on one of them big, thick legs. Tau Arnett. Tau Arnett right there. Former walk-on who played left guard last year. He's a center this season. And a huge third down at six for Minnesota. Bowling Green trying to keep him out of the end zone. Man, wide open. Touchdown, Golden Gophers. An eight-yard touchdown received by Nick Tauarnett, the brother of the center, Jeff Tauarnett. 
That's right. Here you go. You see him. Now they're forced to throw the football. Sets up, and it's Tower on that wide open in the end zone. As P.J. Mahone tries to make up some lost ground. And Unable now to make the play in the end zone. Monroe back on for the extra point. As Minnesota has opened up a 10-point lead. And it's good. 21 to 10 now as Minnesota takes advantage of the fumbled kickoff return. They take it in from 23 yards out on five plays. And Minnesota now leads it 21 to 10. Tonight's game on ESPNU is presented in high definition. Here's a look at Olds Camp Hall, which stands now on the site of the Cleveland Browns' first training camp. Browns uh, actually adopting the team colors of the Bowling Green Falcons. That's why the Browns are orange and brown. It all makes sense now. Yeah. Right now, Greg Brandon's Falcons are down 21 to 10 here in the third quarter after Minnesota taking advantage of a fumbled punt kick return. Yeah, a little bit of that killer instinct. They came out running the rock, uh, trying to dominate the line of scrimmage. Monroe to kick off. And here's Roger Williams to get another crack at it after popping it up last time at the 15. Hit hard at the 20. Good coverage by the Minnesota Golden Gophers. 16-yard return for Williams, but he holds on to the football. Minnesota, two for two now in the red zone with a couple of touchdowns after that last score. And there's a Mullen Green Falcon going off to the locker room. That's Ream, uh, that knee. He's limping still a little bit, he, and he's a force for them defensively. Boy, I know they're hoping he's all right. So now Tyler Sheehan and company down 11, going back to work with 12.25 to go in the third quarter. And Sheehan is actually going to line up as a receiver here as Freddie Barnes takes the snap and hands off to Willie Jeter. Bounces off one tackle and spins for five yards out to the 25-yard line. Good carry on first down for Jeter. And now what does Bowling Green have to do after such an emotional letdown day? Well, you know, uh, you don't want to turn the ball over, but you've got to settle down. They're a veteran group. you got to find a way to move the ball down the field and put it in the end zone. You've got the ability to score plenty of points. Jeter, again, finds some room on that right edge. Cuts it up to the 35, down at the 37-yard line. A gain of 12 for the sophomore running back, Willie Jeter. And, and that's the dimension that Jeter gives them. He's more their scat back. And they line Barnes up at quarterback again, hand it off to Jeter, and you see that speed to find the seam and hits it at 100%. There you go. Yeah, not only quick, but watch him finish this run. That's physical. That's throwing the shoulder in to the tackler and want more yards for your football team. Now Bowling Green has used up a timeout here. And Deion Hightower slow to get up off the field for Minnesota, but now running off on his own power. And you see Bowling Green, they're in their no huddle, kind of half huddle. Linemen are at the line of scrimmage. Skill players, if I can call them that. I think I certainly can on this Bowling Green offense. Come to the sideline and get the play in formation that they want. Tyler Sheehan is lined up as a wide receiver at the bottom of your screen. Freddie Barnes will take this snap. The junior out of Chicago Heights, Illinois. As Anthony Turner, another quarterback type slash player, came in motion. And Barnes takes it himself for three yards. Just so many guys on that Bowling Green offensive date that are quarterbacks slash receivers slash running backs. Well, you got Sheehan lined up a wide receiver. Scheidler, the tight end in at running back, turns in to be the lead blocker for Barnes, a wide receiver at the quarterback position. Soper results in a touchdown here for him. And now Sheehan back behind the center. Barnes at the top of your screen. Sheehan looks over the middle, has a receiver, it's caught. Jeremiah Kelly. To the 45-yard line of Minnesota, a gain of 16. Kyle Barrett, the free safety, finally caught up to him. And you see him throw that slant route to Kelly right over the middle. 
didn't have to break stride. That's the way to set your feet and deliver the football. She in uh, 22 of 32 throwing. Now over 203 yards. And now Barnes back taking the snap. He wants to run to the 45, has some room to the 35, 30. One man to beat, but got pulled down from behind by Tremaine Brock. But a gain of 20 for Freddie Barnes, and Bowling Green is knocking on the door again. And here's Barnes, that quarterback, the lead blocker. That's instinct. He bounces outside. That's a sign to go inside. He used his speed to get to the edge. And boy, close to a horse collar tackle there by Minnesota. Barnes lines up at quarterback again. This time gives it to Jeter, runs into a wall, bounces to the outside, now running out of room, trying to switch directions and caught up with. And it was Lee Campbell, the middle linebacker, who finally got him. It's a loss of eight. And there is Troy Rothenbuehler, the passing game coordinator and assistant head coach. He's throwing everything at Minnesota right now. Yeah, it looks like they're trying to add a little speed to the offense with Barnes at quarterback. Jeter in at the, as the scat back in that one back set. Uh, that time, you got to know when to eat the football, not lose any more yardage. Second down and 18 at the 32. Sheehan looking to throw to the near sideline. Flares it out. It is caught by the tight end, Jimmy Scheidler, who has up to now been pretty quiet tonight. That's a gain of six. Good patience by Sheehan. Taking what the defense gives him, finds his tight end in the flat, get a chunk of the yardage back. It's still going to be third and long. And see how they decide to try and stretch the field. Third down and 12. Partridge goes in motion. Sheehan down the center of the field to the end zone. Wide open is Chris Wright. Touchdown, Falcons. Twenty-seven yard touchdown catch. Sheehan to Chris Wright. And the Falcons right back in it. It starts with the protection up front. Plenty of time to step up in the pocket, deliver the ball up the seam to right. Wide open. Busted coverage in the secondary. They say he's got the most speed of anybody in that Bowling Green receiving core. Chris Wright. Now four catches for 57 yards, and this touchdown, a strike from Tyler Sheehan. And the Falcons back within four. There's Chris Wright yucking it up with his buddies on the sideline after that touchdown catch. A captain, eight play, 80 yard drive for the Falcons. Three minutes, 29 seconds. First touchdown pass tonight, Dave, for Tyler Sheehan. And it was right on the money. Well, and you look at that drive of the eight plays five runs, three passes. They got a little physical, too. They did it a different way. They brought speed into the ball game. And now they're scat back. Jeter, right, the fastest guy on the team, all making plays. Barnes in at quarterback. Uh, they mix things up like they always do. Led to a touchdown at a critical time for their football team. Remember last week, Bowling Green had a tough time in the first quarter against Pittsburgh, but then turned it on and ended up winning that game. Bowling Green a little slow to get started here offensively tonight, but in the last four drives, the Falcons have three scores, two touchdowns and a field goal. Yeah, and there's a little bit of rhythm. The only difference with Minnesota is they score a touchdown, a couple punts. They score a touchdown, it's a punt, then the half. They came out, took advantage of a turnover to start the second half. Let's see if they can keep it going. Off the hands of Stoudemire. And he'll chase it down in the end zone. It'll be a touchback for Minnesota. They'll start at the 20. And the Falcons have all the momentum right now. Okay. This is the great seal of the University Bowling Green State. Now, it's not just a seal. If you kiss your sweetheart at midnight on the seal, it means you're going to get married. If you're holding hands with your sweetie on that seal, but part in opposite directions, it means you're going to break up, Dave, 
And if you're on your way to a test and you pass on the right, it means you're going to pass that test. If you move to the left of it and go to class that way, you're going to fail that test. It's been proven. Uh, I say hold hands and break up. You're in college, son. No time to get married. <laughs> and make sure you pass your test. <laughs> That's coming from a married man, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Adam Weber on first down for Minnesota. Boy, there's Eric Decker. We haven't heard from him in a while. Makes the catch. It's a gain of 12 and a first down for Eric Decker. And Eric Decker, they got to get him back in the ball game. He started out. Had one of their touchdowns, and he is their go-to guy. He's a physical receiver. He's aggressive, and, and both coaching staffs rave about this young man. He's a baseball player. He's a great all-around athlete, a big physical target. After that catch by Decker, first and 10 at the 33, Weber goes to the air again to his running back. Dewan Bennett, he's got room. Out to midfield. And a gain of 17 for the nifty sophomore out of Fairview Heights, Illinois. John Hainline made the tackle. Duan Bennett, they motion out of the backfield, go empty to the trip side. And look who's out in front blocking. There's Decker clearing the way for his running back. An unselfish player in an unselfish system. That stuff is contagious on your football team. That's what young players have to see veteran players do. Duan Bennett has had it couple of really good games to start the 2008 season. The offensive player of the game last week in the win over Northern Illinois. Now a handoff to Shady Solomon. We got some early work in this football game, but that's his first carry here of the second half. It's a game of three. Now, we saw that seal and all the tradition here at Bowling Green. You went to San Jose State. Any traditions there that we need to know about? Uh, none involving getting married or breaking up. <laughs> I need to know, Mr. Newlywed, yeah. whether you passed with your bow across the seal or anything like that in your proposal. No. <laughs> in fact, I got the dry heaves before the proposal, I'll tell you that much. But uh, yeah, I don't blame you, buddy. <laughs> Ned Tavali is down for the Golden Gophers here. Tavali, the right guard, the biggest offensive lineman, the most experienced as well for Minnesota, 6'2", 329 pounds, and yeah. he's limping off. He hasn't missed too many meals either, but you'll see Solomon rolling up on the back of his legs when he's engaged with the lineman, uh, a defensive lineman. That's an offensive lineman's nightmare. You're, you're not able to protect that area and just goes on the back of his knee. That, that one hurts, and that's a lot of weight to be limping on right there. Tavali making his 22nd career start here tonight, but he's going to come out of the game at least for now he's one of the veterans of that offensive line got a redshirt freshman coming in for him it's Chris Bunders in there now at right guard back to Dewan Bennett and he'll pick up six yards Arik Dozier the middle linebacker came over to wrestle him down Weber now four for four for 45 yards through the air here in the second half and a touchdown. We're really impressed with Dewan Bennett. And not only as a running back, you see the burst the coaches talk about. You see the, the strength and the toughness, but a real natural receiver out of the backfield. Very comfortable catching the ball. Third down and four, Minnesota tonight, four of eight. Weber. Briggs again. That's his third sack tonight. A loss of seven. And Minnesota's going to have to punt. Darrell Briggs trying to hit for the cycle. You see him keep working inside. Spin move. He's the penetrator. Trying to clear up the looper. And again, quarterback. Weber, you got to get rid of the football. Covered sack downfield, too much time with a guy like that, with his his ability, get after you. You got to get rid of the ball. Bowling Green going to get it back. Good high punt for Kusick. Fair catch called for it. Lands at the six, and Minnesota trying to pin Bowling Green deep. Did they do it? No, it got in the end zone. 51-yard kick for Justin Kusick. 6:17 to go here. 
in the third quarter, 21-17 Minnesota. Minnesota's known more for its hockey than Bowling Green, but you got a proud tradition here of ice sports as well, especially hockey. A miracle on ice team in 1980, Ken Morrow and Mark Wells, Bowling Green grads. Also, uh, Scott Hamilton yeah. went to school here. The home of Scott Hamilton. Minnesota leading 21 to 17, 6-17 to go in the third quarter. The Falcons going back on offense. Tyler Sheehan in that spread offense. Bowling Green. This is Willie Jeter. Gets away out over the 30 to the 32 yard line. Would have looked like he'd run out of room on the near sideline. Snuck away for an 11 yard pickup. Looks like Minnesota has a stop. They got a hat on a hat outside, but the guys fight to get off the blocks. But Jeter does a little Houdini near the sidelines. I think Minnesota thought he was going out of bounds. No such thought. Darted back in to pick up yardage. And Anthony Turner, he's going to take the snap here. From the 25-yard line, calls his own number. And gets out close to the 35, a gain of four as the clock continues to run. And Sheehan lining up a wide receiver on the far side of the field. And it's not uncommon to see Sheehan catch a pass. Yeah, he's caught passes before, that's for sure. He runs with the football, he throws it. I mean, it, it really is incredible how comfortable they are moving guys in and out of that quarterback position. Partridge threw to Sheehan last year against the Gophers and scored a touchdown. Second down and seven. Sheehan has time, throws to the near sideline. And it's going to be short of the first down, out at the 40, a gain of six yards. Chris Bullock out of the backfield, made that catch, and Marcus Sherrills ran him out. And that time Sheehan just taking what the defense gives him. Third and one. Low snap, Sheehan. And nothing open downfield, number 86, Jeremiah Kelly who caught that touchdown earlier was the closest receiver. Actually, that was Ray Hudson, number 85. Hudson was open. He uncovered just a little bit late in that soft spot of the zone as they jumped the underneath route, knowing the down and distance. And that, that's a tough call. It's third and less than a yard. You take the chance of putting the ball up in the air. You've been running the football. I, I, I like getting a little physical and sticking the ball up there. Nick Iavanelli. Minnesota's going to bring this back. It's Marcus Sherrills. And a 38-yard punt, 9-yard return for Sherrills. And Minnesota will go to work from the 32-yard line. Greg Brandon and the Bowling Green Falcons. Led by Dyrell Briggs on defense. Look at those numbers tonight. Eight tackles, a career-high three sacks. He's got the length, he's got the arms, and look at the effort. That's effort. Starts out high, comes back underneath, and here he is again, finishing towards the quarterback. That's a well-conditioned athlete that's getting after the quarterback. There's Decker. Gain of 10. As starting to get involved again in this Minnesota offense. Such a big week last week. Ten catches for 89 yards and a touchdown, but kind of disappeared there for the second, second quarter. quarter. Sure. Yeah, yeah and, and that's one guy, if you're Minnesota, you can't allow him to disappear. He's a big part of your offense. He's a leader. He's one of your team captains. Just over four minutes to go here in the third. Play action. Weber wants to throw down the middle of the field. Man open at the 35, and it's Decker again. 22-yard reception for Eric Decker. Again, Weber sitting in the pocket, great protection, sets his feet, and Weber just comes back to the football, settles down in that zone, and here he is driving up the field, and then watch the feet, boom, boom, turn it around, comes back to the football, slides down, secures the catch. He'll come out of the game for now. Tim Brewster thinks he's as good of a wide receiver as there is in the country. Gives his Gophers first down and 10. Bennett takes it from Weber. 
Gets hit at the 30 and spins down to the 27-yard line. And that'll be a gain of seven for DeWan Bennett. And now Minnesota comes back and runs a little track play inside. Getting DeWan Bennett running north and south straight up those A-gaps with a pulling guard trapping along the way. You know, and I think Bowling Green's going to look back at that last possession and that third and short, and, and they're going to wish they did something different. No, no regrets now. I mean, you can't do anything about it, but that third and short, boy, you've got to convert that. The easiest way to do is running the football. Second and four for the Golden Gophers. And it's Bennett again. Pickup of one, maybe two. And it'll bring up third down. Dewan Bennett. Tonight for Minnesota, 13 carries, 48 yards. We talked earlier, Dave, about Minnesota hoping to get, you know, three, maybe four backs in the game here tonight. We've seen Dewan Bennett. We've seen Shady Solomon, but that's been basically it. Yeah, and with, uh, with Dewan Bennett, I think you want him on the field as much as possible, but although Shady Solomon has shown some speed. Low snap. Weber trying to make something out of it. Can't. Dumped by Arik Dozier, a loss of five. And that'll bring up fourth down and long for Minnesota. Low snap, can't do anything with it, tries to head up field. There's Dozier attacking the line of scrimmage downhill. Licking his chops when he sees that ball on the ground. Doesn't stop, makes a play for a loss. Now Minnesota hasn't brought the kicking unit out yet. They may be going for it here on fourth down and seven. They need to get to the 24-yard line. Look at the sacks by Bowling Green tonight, four. Wow. That's pressure on the quarterback. That's getting after it. Number 90, Michael Ream, the nose tackle for Bowling Green, left the game earlier with an injury. He's back in now. And Minnesota. That's a guy that doesn't want to stay out of the ball game. And Minnesota with a penalty there. And it'll bring up fourth down and 12. And now the kicking unit will come on. As Kusick will punt for midfield. Partridge standing back at the 10. Down at the two-yard line by Marcus Sherrills. 34-yard punt by Justin Kusick and Sherrills downs it at the two. Coverage. The punt's high enough. The coverage team gets down there and plays shortstop in front of the goal line. Scoops it up to pin Bowling Green inside its own five-yard line. We're in Bowling Green, Ohio. It's the MAC against the Big Ten tonight. Dwight Perry Stadium in Bowling Green. College football primetime presented by City alongside Dave Diaz and Fonte. I'm Clay Matvick for the total yards. Quite a few offensive yards put up here tonight. And Bowling Green down by four. A minute 16 to go here, third quarter. And they're going to run on first down. And Chris Bullock gives him a little breathing room there after a gain of six. There they go, getting back to a little bit of that run game. Uh, you got to credit Bowling Green's defense. The turnover in the first half by Barnes, the defense steps up and keeps Minnesota from scoring. They don't convert on third and less than a yard. They decide to throw the football. It's incomplete. They got a punt. The defense steps up and forces Minnesota to punt. Second down and four. Jimmy Scheidler goes in motion. And Bullock, a lot of room to run into the secondary and finally pulled down at the 27-yard line, a gain of 18. Tremaine Brock, the strong safety, was the man he had to beat, got to him. And there's Scheidler pulling, Lee blocking. And it's Bullock heading north and south and Bowling Green saying, okay, let's not, let's not outsmart ourselves here. Let's run the football because we can. Mix things up. Keep Minnesota honest. And you see some big runs gashing Minnesota right through the heart of the defense. Garrett Brown 
Slow to get up. He's going to come out for at least a play. Three carries now, 26 yards for Chris Bullock. As Bullock was given the start this week because, as Greg Brandon told us, he played his butt off and deserved to after a great game against Pittsburgh. He had 93 yards of total offense. Willie Jeter back from suspension. has got a lot of carries tonight, but Bullock is going to be a big part of this offense too, and that was a good run that they needed. Yeah, you look at Bowling Green and Bullock. He lost 10 to 15 pounds in the offseason. He's really benefited from that. And look at Bowling Green in the second half. 14 plays, starting to get some balance in. And you see a lot of motion, a lot of other things. They're getting back to running the football. Nine of those 14 plays, run plays. We kind of thought this might happen. It's going to be decided in the fourth quarter tonight. Yeah, and, and when you talk to Bowling Green, one of the things that they pride themselves on is their conditioning level, offensively and defensively, the ability to play hard late into games. We'll see what happens in the fourth quarter. They thought that their conditioning beat Pittsburgh last week. We'll see what happens in the fourth quarter here tonight. Four-point game in Bowling Green. Fifteen minutes to go here in Bowling Green. Minnesota leading by four as we start the fourth quarter. Bowling Green with the football first down and ten at their own 27. Tyler Sheehan out of the gun. They run here on first down. It's Chris Bullock. And it's going to be a loss of one on the play. Bowling Green has started to take over the game on the ground. Yeah, we look at the difference. Third quarter alone, 71 yards. That's a that's a halftime adjustment of the coach is saying, hey, we got to get back. We need to get a little more physical, and there's some things we could take advantage of in the running game. Well, he's not too sure. Minnesota in the neutral zone, no penalty flags. Play action. Sheehan wants to throw. Whoa, Going whoa, whoa, deep whoa. downfield. And intercepted Tremaine Brock. The transfer, strong safety, picking it off for Minnesota, and they take over at the 26. Bowling Green gets a little greedy. It's Sheehan looking back, the fake across the middle. He's got time and forces the ball deep into coverage. Tremaine Brock right there, great position. Inside out, makes a play on the football. Tyler Sheehan rarely throws an interception. He had a streak of 110 passes without a pick. Snapped last week at Pittsburgh. That's his second interception thrown in his last 185 attempts. It's a huge turnover. Well, that, well the problem with that is it's first down. If the play's not there, I understand the mentality of going for it, making a big play, but if it's not there, check down to the, your receiver underneath. Dewan Bennett out of the backfield. He's got enough for the first down at Vence up and throws a punishing shoulder into the defensive back. A gain of 18 for Dewan Bennett. And you saw moments ago the turnover numbers. That's the third for Bowling Green. Here's Dewan Bennett. Again, we talked about his hands out of the backfield. But watch this effort, boy. That's throwing, throwing a little jawbone right there. A little booyah. First down and 10. Bennett trying to cut it back inside. And he's upended by the linebacker, John Hainline. Second down and eight coming up. Now, the, quite a change from one week to the next for Bowling Green. Taking advantage of turnovers, turning them into scores last week. This week, they're shooting themselves in the foot. At least that last one was. You know, it was a punt. The bad thing, that's a punt on first down. Weber to Bennett, and he is leveled by Hainline. John Hainline has been good on defense tonight. The team's second leading tackler from a year ago, throwing his body around on that one. Hainline on the play before, goes low to defeat the blocker and make the play on Dewan Bennett, and this time on the screen. Again, a lot of air on that football. 
Gave Hamline time to make the read and make the hit right in the side of the ear hole of Dewan Bennett. That one rang his bell. That's helmet underneath the chin. That's how you play the game. Now the officials cracking down this year on helmet-to-helmet -helmet contact that appears to be intentional. Your thoughts on that tackle by Hainline? That's a good, hard-hitting tackle right there. Shoot the hits. Make the running back pay the price for catching the ball. And there's also a, another Golden Gopher down. It's the center, Jeff Tauarnett, who's being helped off. So we've got bodies everywhere. Two Golden Gophers are being helped to the sideline. And a third down and nine situation for the Minnesota offense coming up. And again, Bowling Green, after their turnover, their defense digs their feet in the ground and says, hey, we're going to make a play. We're going to hold them. We're going to hold up our end of this deal. And now, third and nine, this is what they feed off. Watch how they decide to pressure the quarterback. New center in the game for Minnesota. It's redshirt freshman Trey Davis out of Farmington, Minnesota. Keep an eye on this snap. Dewan Bennett is out of the game. So is the starting center for the Gophers on third down and nine. Blitz coming. Snap is high. Weber gets it away and complete. Completed out at the 41-yard line. Bowling Green thought that it was out of bounds, but it's a 13-yard reception for Ben Kuznia. New center in the game. That's Trey Davis. High snap. Bobble. Boy, talk about composure. Weber, that's a cool cat. Not panicking. Gets his eyes downfield and makes a play when they need it desperately. Third and nine converts to Ben Kuznia. First down and 10 at the 41. Weber's going to keep it himself. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. A gain of one, and then pays the price. There's Kevin Alvarado, defensive tackle out of East Chicago, Indiana, a redshirt freshman, laying the hit. Second down and nine coming up for Minnesota. That was Alvarado teeing him up and allowing Darrell Briggs to finish off Weber. Shady Solomon is the tailback who lines up to the left of Weber. To the near side, the receiver, Eric Decker. Weber wants to throw again. He has completed 12 consecutive passes. This one to the 35-yard line, a gain of five to Kuznia. Well, college football action continues on ESPNU Sunday afternoon as the Morehouse Tigers take on Fort Valley State. College football on ESPNU Sunday at 2. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Third down and four coming up for Minnesota. 11 and a half to go as Minnesota looking for that insurance touchdown. Yeah. Fourth quarter's here. Third down. Can they convert again? Play action. Weber. And incomplete. Good coverage there by Hainline, who nearly picked that one off. Who makes the play again when they need it? Hainline. Great coverage, forces a tight throw by Weber. Tended receiver Jack Simmons there, and Minnesota will go for it here on fourth down and four. This is what the game's all about right here. Fourth and four, it's the fourth quarter. They've got the lead. I don't know if they have to, but I like it. Instead of trying a long field goal. And this is the kind of coach Tim Brewster is. Minnesota tonight 0 for 1 on fourth down. Weber to the air, had a receiver, and it is caught for a Minnesota first down. The tight end, Jack Simmons. A seven-yard pass play. And the senior from Libertyville, Illinois, will move the chains for Minnesota. That's confidence in your quarterback. The offensive line gives him the time to make the throw. Simmons uncovers against Hainline again, and they pick up the first down. Huge play for the Gophers. Simmons finally healthy after some foot injuries last season. First and ten for the Gophers. Play action to Solomon. Weber to the end zone. Eric Decker, what a catch! 
Touchdown, Gophers. Oh, my. 28-yard strike, Weber to Decker. Right on the screws. Decker on the outside. Again, the fake inside. Weber keeps the ball thin to the skinny post between two defenders. Decker makes a catch in traffic for the touchdown. Weber had one place to foot that footballer was going to be picked off, and he threw it right to where it needed to be. Decker now six catches for 84 yards and a touchdown. It's worth another look as we go to break. 10.41 to go in the game, and Minnesota has opened up an 11-point lead on a great catch by Eric Decker. Adam Weber and the Golden Gophers up 11 now. What a drive for Minnesota. Nine plays, 73 yards. That covers three minutes and 30 seconds. Eric Decker, his second touchdown of the night, first receiving. And that was a great drive for Minnesota and a gutsy call by Tim Brewster on fourth down. That was gutsy, and they found their tight end. And they love the dimension that Simmons has given them and a compliment to Decker. Now they have a true threat in the seam. So teams can't just bracket Decker. Now they got a tight end to contend with. And it was Simmons that made the big catch on fourth down, allowed the drive to keep going, and led to the touchdown by Decker. From the three, Roger Williams. Hit it for 17. 15-yard return for Williams. And let's go back to that last drive for Minnesota, some of the key plays. Yeah, high snap. Look at Weber, no panic, under pressure, completes the ball to Kuznia. And then there's the fourth down conversion, and then the strike right up the seam, on the money, on a rope to Decker for the touchdown. Giving him a 28-17 lead. We talked about it at halftime, Dave. You said that a win tonight for Minnesota would mean more for that program than a win would mean for Bowling Green getting it. Oh, I, I, I think so because these young players are all of a sudden really starting to believe in the plan, in the coaches, and more importantly, in themselves. Gain of eight there for Freddie Barnes as Tim Brewster has to feel quite a bit better about the situation now with an 11-point lead, a little over 10 minutes to go. Certainly, though, this game far from over. And there is Willie Jeter out of the backfield, the catch. Ball is loose. Minnesota says they've got it. But apparently nobody is down now. No signal yet. And, and Bowling Green has no challenge left. Still no signal. That Minnesota was, football. That ball was not blown dead. Minnesota takes the ball. Fourth Bowling Green turnover tonight. From Jeter. Watch this. There's the throw. Jeter makes the catch. Turn off field. He's got the first down. He's fighting for the ball. That ball is loose and taken by Minnesota. No chance to review it to see if that knee was down. Used it up in the first half. I think that ball is loose. Advantage Minnesota. Solomon. And you'll remember earlier in the game, Greg Brandon lost a challenge, which means he is out of challenges. And look at the turnovers tonight. Right. That's the fourth for the Falcons. That's the story. Yeah, yeah. That is the story of this game. And Bowling Green is actually lucky that their defense has stepped up a few times. We'll see if they're up for it. One more task. One more time here. Yeah, at, at some point, the turnovers, they're going to break your back. Weber will give to his tailback. Solomon slipped down and goes down at the 14-yard line. And that's a gain of nine for Shady Solomon. Freshman as Dewan Bennett is on the sideline. Yeah, Shady Solomon gets slim Shady right there as P.J. Mahone can't make the tackle in the backfield. Missed tackles. 
That's a sign of fatigue. That's a sign of a defense that's been backed into the wall. They've been fighting their tails off. Let's see if they can bow up right now as Minnesota. I think they smell blood. Yeah, they could really go a long way towards putting this game away with a touchdown. Solomon over right tackle inside the 10. And that'll be a gain of seven for Solomon. One of the bright young players that Tim Brewster is excited to have. We talked about the recruiting class that he had last year. A top 25 recruiting class. Some ranked in the science top, yeah, top 15. And, and, you know, and that's what Tim Brewster is known for, his ability to recruit, the way he's been able to translate his passion for the game to young players out there saying, hey, come join us. Help us build something. Solomon, that's his eighth carry tonight. No gain on that play. So third down and four coming up for Minnesota. That was a tough loss for the Gophers last year to these Bowling Green Falcons. Lost 32-31 in overtime at the Metrodome. One of their 11 losses last year. Looking to exact some revenge here tonight on the road in Bowling Green, Ohio. Third down and four. Out of the gun, Weber looks right. Now comes back left. Caught by Kuznia. Bangs his way inside the five and down at the three. It'll be first down and goal to go for Minnesota. Uh, everything about that play took the defense to the right, and they come back to Kuznia, and he catches the ball with some blockers, heads back upfield. If he goes outside, he might score. Fourth catch for Kuznia tonight, 32 yards, and it puts Minnesota back on the doorstep. There's Kuznia. He comes out of the game. Weber keeps it himself. Touchdown, Minnesota. And that might be the backbreaker right there as Adam Weber takes it in himself from three yards up. It's the fourth turnover of the game that probably is going to prove to be fatal for Bowling Green as Minnesota smelt it took advantage of it, and pounded the ball down the field. Joel Monroe with the extra point. And with under seven minutes to go, Minnesota in the driver's seat, leading 35-17. to 17. Weber now four touchdowns tonight, three passing, and that one rushing. Fans in Bowling Green heading for the exit says Minnesota has opened up a 35-17 lead with under seven minutes to go here in Bowling Green. Adam Weber has been outstanding tonight. That last touchdown drive, six plays, 28 yards in under three minutes as Minnesota has scored on back-to-back -back drives. And Minnesota taking advantage of some mistakes for Bowling Green tonight. Turnovers, and it's that fourth one that... Uh, that I think is a straw that broke Bowling Green's back. You can only hold up for so long. And, and it's good to see a young team like Minnesota create those opportunities and then finally take advantage of them back to back to put away the game in the fourth quarter, if that can be said. Former walk-on Joel Monroe to kick off again here tonight. And one more time, here comes Roger Williams. No, he won't. He'll slip at the eight-yard line. And it continues to come unglued for Bowling Green and a near turnover there. Four turnovers tonight for the Falcons. A fumble by Barnes. And then it's a fumble by Williams on the opening kickoff of the second half. And it's an interception, forcing the ball downfield. And then another takeaway by Minnesota. And Minnesota with 21 points off those turnovers tonight. That's basically the story of this football game, and it looks like Minnesota's going to go to 2-0. And a muffed kickoff return that pins them deep in their own territory. There's Freddie Barnes with the reception. The spread offense at times for Bowling Green has been fun to watch, but you got to credit Minnesota. Nothing really took them by surprise tonight. 
No, uh, uh, the different formations. I mean, both teams played hard and well, but in the end, it's who can take advantage of the other team's mistakes. And you think that edge would go to Bowling Green with their experience. Sheehan gets away from the pressure but throws it incomplete. Trying to get it to Marcus Parks. And the clock will stop with 6.17 to go and a third down and one coming up. And this time it's, it's Minnesota with pressure on the quarterback on Sheehan. To force him into an incomplete pass. And another fumble. And Minnesota has recovered again. Just trying to pick up the first down on third and one. And again, Bowling Green turns it over. Willie Vandesteeg with the play. Boy, there he is inside again. Second fumble of the night for Jeter. Just not getting the handoff clean, not tucking the ball away. And Minnesota, give them credit for stripping the ball, raking at the football. There's going to be some guys walking around campus with the football tied to their hip for Bowling Green the rest of this week. Third straight Bowling Green drive, which has ended in a turnover. An interception and two fumbles. First down and 10 for Minnesota. And it's Solomon who runs it inside the 15. Down to the 11, a gain of seven for Shady Solomon. Wow, this was the only home game for Bowling Green in September. They had a sellout crowd to play in front of after that emotional win on the road at number 25 Pitt. The town was excited, and Greg Brandon has to be sick to his stomach tonight. Five turnovers in this football game. And it's one thing to get beat, but it's another thing to beat yourself, especially if you're a veteran team like Bowling Green. Uh, you took advantage of those opportunities last week, led to a big 25 team. This week, it, you're your own worst enemy. And Solomon again over right tackle. It's going to be close to the first down. And now things getting a little chippy down there. Bowling Green trying to strip the ball away from Solomon. Give him a gain of two on the play. And, and, and I give Bowling Green's defense credit, you know. They're chippy because they're pissed off. Uh, they're mad right now. You know, the turnovers, and, and now Minnesota's trying to have their way with them and impose their will on them. And, and you know what? I give them credit because they're not going down easily. There's still some fight left. I don't think it's going to do any good, but it's important for your teammates to see that effort and that attitude of never quitting on film, even though the result may be out of hand. Third and one. Solomon. Down close to the five, enough for the first down. Goal to go coming up for the Gophers. And the clock stops momentarily. Now running again, four and a half minutes to go, and the Gophers are going to go to 2-0 and for the first time since 2005 when they started 4-0. and And Tim Brewster trying to get that program in Minnesota turned around. And what a great start to 2008. Hey, don't think that Minnesota has forgotten about that overtime loss last year in Minnesota on their own turf. And, and, and they're going to try and put the ball in the end zone right here. First and goal from the five. Solomon cuts it back to the goal line. Touchdown, Minnesota. Shady Solomon, his first collegiate touchdown. And it's 41-17 Gophers. And what do they do? They, they pound it in on the ground. Shady Solomon, the freshman. And you look at some of these young players on the field from Minnesota. Four play, 18-yard drive for Minnesota after another Bowling Green turnover. Solomon now 60 yards on 12 carries, and that touchdown, Monroe the extra point, and it's 42-17 Minnesota. 
as the Gophers now have put up 28 points off of Bowling Green turnovers tonight. And Shady Solomon, he'll remember that for the rest of his life, his first touchdown as a Gopher. Two seventeen, Minnesota 3.55 away from their second win of 2008. Bowling Green with five turnovers tonight, the most since last year when they threw six interceptions against Boston College on the road. It's really the story tonight. Bowling Green right in this game until they started having trouble holding on to the football. Good coverage on that kick for Minnesota. Bowling Green will have it. First down and 10 with 3.48 to go is Tyrone Pronti on that last return. And in Minnesota, it's a it's a feeding frenzy right now. Special teams are feeding off it. The defense is feeding off it. The offense taking advantage of the opportunities presented to them. 21 answered points for Minnesota. Scoring on three consecutive turnovers for Bowling Green. Here's Tyler Sheehan, pressure. Got it away, the pass was low. As Jeremiah Kelly, who had a touchdown earlier, was the intended receiver there. But Tyler Sheehan, they've been uh, pressuring him here in the second half much better. Eric Small got in his face on that last play. Yeah, they're running some line stunts, twisting, moving around. Dumped underneath. Out of the backfield, Chris Bullock. That's going to be a gain of one, third down coming up. So a tough schedule lies ahead for Bowling Green. Like we said before, this is the Falcons' only home game in the month of September. They're going to go to Boise State next week, which is no easy task. Tough, tough place to play on the blue turf. And then they're at Wyoming on the 27th. In Laramie. Oh, in and out of the hands of Chris Wright. That's been that kind of second half. Here's a look at that second half, for, or excuse me, that schedule for Bowling Green. And Greg Brandon told you and I this week that this is the toughest schedule his team has had since he's been the head coach. Yeah, only one home game in their non-conference schedule. Uh, makes it tough, and that's, that's you know, it's what they got to do. It's it's the MAC. It's it's the mid-major type of schools. It makes it tough, but his players thrive on it. And Bowling Green will punt here. Fair catch called for by Marcus Sherrills. 36-yard punt for Aya Vanelli. And ESPNU College Football Primetime presented by City. Whatever your story is, your City card can help you write it because City never sleeps. And now we're going to get Minnesota's backup quarterback, Tony Mortensen. We'll see a little work. The senior out of Hutchinson, Minnesota, took just nine snaps last year. And with the game in hand with three minutes to go, he'll take the snaps the rest of the way. Chance to run out the clock. And he'll hand off. That's Eskridge. Deleon Eskridge, the freshman out of San Francisco, the only running back other than Dewan Bennett to get a carry last week. Makes that run there of six yards. And for Minnesota, they're going to host Montana State next week and then Florida Atlantic after that before getting into Big Ten play, and they go to Ohio State. <laughs> you look at that schedule, and there's a chance for them to go 4-0 to open up the season. I mean, what does that do for a young program, a rebuilding program, with, uh, you know, the third youngest roster in the country? Tough part is then you got to go play Ohio State. Daly on Eskridge again. He'll be short of the first down. Picked up four.
fewest seniors on any roster. Central Michigan has just 10, and they're a pretty good football team. Toledo just up the road from Bowling Green here has 10, and Minnesota with 11, one of the youngest teams in the country. So Tim Brewster has to feel good that the Gophers are 2-0 and after two weeks with such a young squad. Yeah, that, I mean, that just builds so much in the psychology of young players to build that confidence, to buy into what Coach Bruce has been telling them, the excitement of a new stadium opening up next year, the improvement in the facilities, the revival of the tradition of Minnesota football, six national championships in their history, 100, 126 year of football coming up. Eskridge, a loss of one. And, and I, I was talking to Coach Brewster yesterday, Tim, and, and he said, people think I'm crazy because I'm so positive about what we can accomplish, what I want to accomplish, the vision we have for our program, and, and the history that I'm trying to reconnect people with in Minnesota to some of the great traditions that have existed with the University of Minnesota football program. And Bowling Green was the favorite coming into this game here tonight. Coming off the win over a top 25 team. They're at home. Minnesota down a little bit. Even though they had the win last week. So this is a great boost for Minnesota. Hey, Bowling Green was favored coming into this ballgame. Gophers call a timeout here with 35 seconds to play. And, and as well as Bowling Green played on tape, it makes me think two things. That one, Minnesota, with these young players, maybe a little bit better. Pittsburgh may not be as good as most people thought coming into the uh, the season because I'll tell you what, Bowling Green handed it to them. They outplayed them. They outhit them. And, and, and they had 52 knockdowns in that game, 40 by the offensive line, 12 by the wide receivers and DBs. So uh, there was no, it, it was no smoke and mirrors. They beat them soundly. And now Minnesota comes in here and, and takes advantage of the opportunities. That's a valuable lesson for young players to learn. Minnesota's going to punt this thing away. Fair catch called for by Partridge. At the 14-yard line, 30-yard punt for Kusick. Here's a look at the top 10 this week. Of course, USC off this week. They'll see Ohio State next week, which won barely over in-state rival Ohio today. Georgia win over Central Michigan out of the MAC. Florida, last update, leading 16-3 over Miami that game in the fourth quarter. Yeah, those rivals are going at it. I tell you what, everyone's been looking forward to that Ohio State-USC game. How about East Carolina getting another win? East Carolina, huh? How about open those two road? How about those two road wins, huh? Virginia Tech last week and this week over West Virginia. There's Bullock out over the 20, still on his feet, close to the 30-yard line. Your first down for Bowling Green. Probably one more play in this game. I'm not sure if Ohio State was looking looking past Ohio University or not, but. That's a game they could have lost. And USC, Ohio State better get ready because USC, uh, they're as talented as anyone in this country, and they've, they've got some mojo going with them right now. Beanie Wells should be back for Ohio State. And, and that'll help a lot. And that's going to do it as Minnesota gets a big win on the road for Tim Brewster as he tries to rebuild that gopher program. And they're, and they're on their way. You better watch out because... Tim Brewster and this group, they will continue to recruit. They'll get the players. They'll build the dream. And, and, and this young team, 2-1-0, that's, that's a fantastic start. Coming up next, we're going to send you to our Sports Center U studio with Lowell Galindo and Tom Luganville. For more information, log on to your home for the finest in college sports, ESPNU.com. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For David Diaz and Fonte, I'm Clay Matvick. And for entire crew, so long from Bowling Green, Ohio, the Gophers win it. 42-17 on the road.